Hello, I want to show you how to use this procedural AIM project with other guns, other animations and other characters. First, we need to decide which type of characters we are going to use. Is it an arms only type of character or is it a full body type of character? I'm going to use a full body character and I'm going to choose the full body option 2 for this video. So we can delete all the other folders to make a cleaner project. We can't delete the intro folder while we have the intro map open because this map is in the intro folder. So I'm going to just go to an empty level first so I can delete this intro folder. And I can delete the other folders. The intro map has reference to the other maps and on the other folder, so it's a good idea to delete the intro map first. Now let's grab some free weapons from the marketplace. If we go to the marketplace, to the weapon section, and organize by price low to high. Now we can find some free weapon packs. I'm going to grab this one. In the description, it doesn't state that it's compatible with Unreal Engine 5, but it does work normally in Unreal Engine 5. We can just add to the project. Now your project won't, your Unreal Engine 5 projects won't appear in the list because it's not marked as compatible, but you can just click on show all projects and then your then all your Unreal Engine projects will appear. And then you need to choose which version of the weapons pack you're going to add since it doesn't have a Unreal Engine 5 version. So let's choose the latest Unreal 4 version and it works normally. Add to project. now we have the FPS weapon bundle folder in our project. Let's choose a weapon in the pack. Let's go to the meshes folder. I'm going to go for the AR-14 gun. You can see there are four different versions of the same gun here. It's because two of them are static meshes if you want to use a static mesh, a static mesh and two of them are skeletal meshes. It makes no difference. You can use either skeletal mesh or static mesh guns. Let's grab a skeletal mesh gun. There are two of them to choose from. One of them has the X in the name. That's because it, the weapon points in the X axis and the other one, the weapon points in the Y axis. It also doesn't make any difference. You can use the one you, you prefer. If, if you look at the, the X version, the weapon is pointing in the X axis you can see the coordinate system here in the bottom and if we grab the other one it's pointing in the y-axis the weapon is pointing in the y-axis our own gun that comes included in the procedural aiming asset is the epic example gun it points in the x-axis so for now I'm going to just grab one that points in the y-axis. First thing we need to do is place sockets on the gun sight. So let's go in the gun. And this gun has ion sights, which means it has two sights, one rear sight and one front sight. So we need to place a socket here in the rear sight named rear endpoint and another socket here on the front side named front endpoint. So let's do that. Do those sides belong to any bone of the gun? So let's check each of them. Let's move them and see if the, the sides move with them. So charge handle. No. And fire mode. No. Gun mag. No. Mag bullets. 
no reject no and no so and trigger also no so those sites belong to the root bone so we are going to place the endpoint endpoint socket on the root bone and we don't need to worry about moving those those bones because they don't get saved you can press save here and it doesn't save it to the skeleton or to the gun so just to check this let's reopen you see they're all in their ori original places if you by any chance want to manually return them to the original position just right click here and reset bone transforms so let's go to the root bone and add the first socket this is going to be the rear side socket so we need to aim this rear endpoint and we need to place this at the rear side of the gun very important let's first rotate this because the z-axis of the endpoint must point upwards and the x-axis of the endpoint must point forward so let's first rotate We'll take this so the Z axis points up with the angle snapping turned on. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees here. And now let's rotate it 90 degrees in this direction. Now it's in the correct orientation, let's place it in the correct position, which is in the middle. the tip of the arrow here to to see if it's centered now let's add the second socket the front endpoint socket so add socket and this one needs to be named front endpoint Also needs to be rotated so the Z axis points upward and the Y and the X axis points forward. So let's rotate this 90 degrees and 90 degrees. So it's pointing in the right direction. save it actually we need to save the skeleton because the mesh the sockets belong to the skeleton and now we go to our our gun blueprint and replace the mesh there with this mesh This is the mesh component. It's a skeletal mesh component, so we can just replace the skeletal mesh here with the gun skeletal mesh. So we can 
select it in the browser with this button now that it's selected in the content browser we go here and press this arrow and it's rotated because the the original gun was facing the x-axis and this one faces the y-axis so we have two options we can rotate the component here so it faces the x-axis x-axis if we want or we can just rotate the socket for this gun in the, in the character's hand which is what I'm going to do also we have all those attachment components here that we are not going to use because I'm going to bring an attachment from the from this weapon package package so let's delete all those original attachments compile save now let's rotate the socket in the character's hand and see how it looks let's go to the procedural any folder and grab the idle animation here we select the the example socket in the right hand and choose add preview asset let's choose the gun that we are using it is this one and it's pointing to the right because the socket was made for a gun that was pointing in the x-axis so we can just rotate the socket 90 degrees so it points forward and let's see if we need to make further adjustments to the socket to accommodate this specific gun by the way you can have multiple sockets on the same bone on the on the hand bone for example or you can rotate the mesh the skeletal mesh component on the blueprint as i showed before this animation wasn't made for this gun so if you have animations made for your own guns that's going to look better let's stop this animation to make it easier to move the, the socket now we need to add the tags to this component because it has sites in it and later I'm going to add a site attachment to this gun so it will have more than one site so it needs to know which site to use first when you're, when you're aiming down sites and you're cycling between different sites it needs to know the order of the different sites so with the component selected let's go to the tag section and it had one tag because it was the original gun the epic white gun that had only one optic sight in its mesh now it has an iron sight which means it has two sights one tag needs to be named front sight underscore zero and the other tag needs to be named rear sight underscore zero and now let's add the optic sight attachment let's go to the the weapon pack folder weapons meshes accessories and let's add this one but first we need to place the socket here too let's find the red dot you see the thing here is that the red dot is not on the surface because of the this material was made in a way such that the red dot appears to be floating behind it it's realistic but it makes our lives a bit harder here one option we have is to go to the back view and place the socket here create socket and it needs to be named 
optic endpoint. And we try to place it as best as we can exact, exactly in the middle. But we have another option, which is to go to this material. And luckily, it has a parameter for the position of the of the red dot. So which is the red dot depth depth. So we can just set this to zero temporarily. And when we go back here, we can see that the red dot is actually on the surface of the glass. So it makes our life our lives even easier. Now we can go back to the material instance and set it back to minus 150. Save it. All right. Now I can select this in the content browser, select it here, and I go and I select the main mesh, the main weapon component, and add another static mesh component. Now I just position it where I want. Now I need to add the tag to this component too. So let's go to the tag section with this component selected. And it needs to have one tag named optic site underscore one because the other component already has the tag underscore zero. So when you press the end of sites button in game, you're going to start by aiming through the iron sites and then when you cycle site, you're going to switch to the optic site. So optic site underscore one. Pile and save. And also, we need to go to the collision section and set the, the attachment to have no collision, otherwise it will interfere with the character. So, no collision. We don't need these. Also, don't need to generate overlap events. So, compile and save. And let's test this. Let's go to the, the map included in the procedural aiming project. Now, if you don't want this blur effect in the red dot when you move the mouse around, you can go here in the camera settings, the first camera, first person camera, in the character blueprint. You have the first person camera component, and you go to the details panel in the post process section, rendering features, motion blur. And then you set this to zero. I have to tick this box and set this to zero. Now compile, save, and test. Now we don't have that blur effect anymore.
Now let's bring another character to the project. Let's go to the marketplace. If we go to the character section, let's order by price. And we can see some character packs free here. So let's grab this one, for example. Now we have the character folder here. Let's take a look at our character. Let's see if the hand can be in a weapon holding position without looking broken. So let's take the left hand bone. When you're holding a weapon, usually your hand will be rotated like this. And you can see that wrist right now it doesn't look good but that's why the character has a twist on the lower arm a twist bone on the lower arm so if it's at least partially rotated it fixes the problem and it looks good if you twist too much it's going to start looking bad again So it looks good. Let's place his arm in more of a weapon holding position. And his hand would be more kind of like this so it looks good it doesn't look broken we probably it might rotate it a bit more depending on the animation it might be more rotated and the wrist bone the lower arm twist might be more rotated or less rotated but it still look, looks nice some characters either don't have the lower arm twist bone or have the have it but it's not properly skinned to the to the vertices of the, the of the character arms so when you try to hold a weapon with with those characters the wrist looks looks bad it's not the case with this character though so we, we we can use it now let's reset those bones to the original position now let's copy the two sockets from our character into this one Let's go to our character folder. And grab this socket on the right hand, the example socket. Copy selected sockets. You can click anywhere in the character and select paste sockets. The socket will go to the, the correct bone, which is the right hand bone. And now the camera socket on the head. Copy. Page. Right. Each set is a mesh on the socket. You can promote this to skeleton socket if you want. Now let's set the virtual bones. 
the original character has two virtual bones we can't we can't copy those bones but it's very easy to just add them to to the new character just click on the head right click add virtual bone and then select the target bone which for the first virtual bone is going to be the hand R bone and rename it to just VB hand R and now right click on VB hand R and add the second virtual bone this time the target bone will be hand L now rename it to just VB hand L Let's check this. All right. Now we need to be able to play our animations, the animations that were included in the procedural aiming asset on this character. Luckily, this character uses a is compatible with the mannequin skeleton. So all we need to do is open the retargeting options and set the the options according to the epic guide here on the epic documentation page we right click on the root bone and set all bones to skeleton recurs recursively now set the pelvis to animation scale pelvis animation scale and root bones and other marker style bones to use animation so root bone animation and the other marker style are these IK bones for example so animation 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 and animation so let's save the skeleton Now I'm going to go to my animations folder for part project 2 animations and I'm going to select all my animations animation sequences and my blend space right click replace skeleton and let's find the new character skeleton I think it's this one not this one, you can see by the path, the folder path, it's this one, okay. Now let's see how those animations are looking on this character. Let's go to the skeleton of the character and now all my animations are listed under his skeleton. If I didn't replace the skeleton on those animations, it, they wouldn't appear here. So let's see how the idol looks on the new character. It's using the mesh of the mannequin. We can change the preview mesh to the new character. And looks all right. So we can save everything. Right? Control Shift Alt S to open this window and save everything. Now let's preview the new gun on this character. Let's go to the socket on his hand. Add preview asset. looking cool now we need to replace the mesh on our character blueprint so let's go to our character blueprint select the mesh of the character and with this mesh selected on the content browser I can just click on this arrow and now it's replaced compile and save and let's test this third person
to reload. Now the blow animation was made for this rifle, so it might not look exact. We'll see from outside. Now let's bring a free rifle animation spec from the marketplace. If you search for animation starter starter pack, animation starter pack, open launcher. Add the project. Now we go to the new animation starter starter pack folder filter by animation sequence and control A to select all the animations and then replace skeleton let's choose the new character skeleton which is this one okay let's find the walk animations from the spec So all the walk animations from the spec are for iron sights, are for aiming. It doesn't have hip walk animations, but it makes no difference because the sights won't be aligned to the character's camera anyway. And we can use those iron sights animations as if they were hip animations anyway. And the animation blueprint of the shooter procedural asset will be will make the the alignment of the site the gun sights to the, to the camera anyway when we press the aim button so let's take a look at the walk forward animation we will do some adjustments in the animation blueprint and the, the main problem here is that the animation the animation looks very cool but it was made for external view third person and stuff like that it wasn't made for first person view so it won't look awesome when we see it from the perspective of a camera placed in the head of the character but it serves anyway it serves as an example of how to replace the animations of the asset Let's see how it looks in our new character here. Looks cool. It fits. I also want to use the blend space that comes included in this pack so let's get the blend space too and replace the skeleton let me change the preview mesh to a character and I want to replace those running animations with walk animations so you can see it's running running to the left running to the right running backwards running backwards and same thing here at the bottom I want to have here at the bottom line I want to have idle and here at the top I want to have walk animations so 
let's grab the idle idle pistol idle rifle iron sight also let me turn on the grid snapping so it's easier to replace animations okay you can see here it's the jog forward rifle I'm going to grab the idle rifle iron sight and place it here since we have grid snapping turned on it replaced the other animation that was here I'm going to do the same for all the animations that are in the bottom So yeah, I'm checking to see if we have only idle animations here at the bottom. So now at the top, jog forward, I'm going to place walk forward. Walk forward here. So now he's walking. But to the right he's running. So here I'm going to place the walk right walk right now he's walking and here it's the run backwards so I'm going to place the walk backwards same thing at this corner backwards jog backwards walk backwards By the way, to, to move the cursor here, you, you need to hold control and then move the mouse. This is Unreal Engine 5. If it was Unreal Engine 4, you need to hold shift, if I remember correctly, not control. And now this one, jog left. I'm going to replace it with walk left. So now walking forward, walking left, walk backwards, walk, walk to the right, walk backwards, and at the bottom only idle. So control S to save. Now on this vertical axis. This is called speed. It was named vertical axis was named speed, and it will receive in our animation blueprint this this blend space will receive the speed of the character, t and it will use that to decide the amount of walk animations that's going to to blend in the blend space. So this axis, vertical axis, va maximum value should be the maximum value of our character speed which isn't 270 like it's set here so let's grab the speed, the maximum speed of our character so we go to our character blueprint select the character movement component and go to the details panel in the character movement walking so max walk speed 120 so we replace 270 with 120 now we got an error I think it's because we had grid snapping snap to grid turned on and then I switched the maximum value from 135 to 120 and the 
those animation samples couldn't snap to the new value so I turned snap to grid off adjusted them and turned snap to grid back on and now they are on the correct places at 120 and we have no errors anymore now we need to go to our animation blueprint and replace the blend space that's being used there with this blend space but first we need to change the skeleton of our animation blueprint because it's using the original mannequin skeleton so let's go to our animation blueprint and in the class settings search for skeleton and target skeleton we select the new character skeleton which is this one compile and save and let's reopen it and now we go to the anim graph and select the the blend space node and in the details panel you go to the blend space and we select the new blend space buy on save here we can change the the, the preview mesh too so let's place the new characters mesh we can see that it's not right the gun is at the wrong place it's because this animation blueprint has a node that straightens the head so if we take a look at the original animation so it's playing the idle animation here so let's go to the uh, idle animation here and in the original idle animation the head is looking downwards and it's a bit tilted to the right this is very common and in the animation blueprint there's a node that straightens the head and since the, the virtual bones for the hands which are the target IK for the hand bones they are children of the head when the head rotates up the the virtual bones for the hand also go up but we can adjust that and place the we place both hands in the position that we want that's because we have the first person camera attached to the head and if the head was pointing downwards we would be looking at the ground and also we would be tilted to the right when we were playing in first person so we don't want that so this animation blueprint has a node that straightens the head so when you're playing you start looking forward and also the camera is not tilted to the right so let's start by placing a transform bone node to move the right hand and consequently the gun to the position that we want so right here in the not aiming section we only need this node in the not aiming section because when we are aiming the position of the right hand is overridden by the aiming nodes anyway so let's place it here transform bone and the bone that let's go to the tails panel and the bone to modify is the VB hand or the virtual bone for the right hand and translation mode we need to change from ignore to add to existing and translation space is going to be parent bone space same thing with the rotation rotation mode add to existing and rotation space parent bone space we don't need scale and as a matter of fact I'm going to hide the scale pin the alpha pin that we are not going to use and since 
we can adjust the values of translation and rotation here or here I will hide the pins for translation and rotation too now we can adjust the values here let me first connect the, the node and when we compile we get a widget so we can we have two options we can adjust the position here so we can use this here or we can adjust di directly here with the widget let me increase this viewport size and I'm pressing space to switch from translation to rotation and I'm also going to stop this animation to make it easier turn off snapping Let's test this. Looks cool from third person, but in first person it's still not quite there yet. Now his hand is too big for this gun, so we are going to have to also move the left hand to a better place. Now let's place another transform bone node, but this time for the left hand. And for the left hand we are not going to place it on the not aiming section, we want it to work all the time, so we are going to place it here in the beginning. So. Let's place the transform bone node. This node is going to be with the node selected. Go to the details panel and I'm going to select the virtual bone for the left hand and do the same thing for the other settings. Don't need to expose this. Add to existing parent bone space. I need to expose this, add to existing, parent on space, don't need to expose this. The alpha pin I'm not going to hide, I'm not going to use it, but you might want to use it in, in your project to disable this node. Say for example when you reload the gun, you might not want to have this node changing the place of the left hand so you might want to use a variable connected to the alpha pin to turn on and off this node so let's connect the pile and now we have a gizmo for the left hand and i'm going to move it downwards
so let's test this now the left hand is not getting in the way of the sight but when we aim up the left arm stretches completely and it's not able to reach the supposed position on the gun so it goes out of position and it kind of looks bad so in first person you can see that the left hand moves when you aim up because the left arm doesn't have the reach to grab the gun so we can fix that in the same note by dragging the left hand a bit backwards Now it's fine. Now we lost the sway because we're using different animations. I need to copy the sway curves from my animations to these new walk animations. And let's test the reload animation. And from outside. seems like I'm still using the run, the jog animation for the backward direction so let's go back and fix that so he's walking backwards and here he's running backwards yeah, I need to replace this animation This is the jog, should be the walk animation. Walk backwards. Save it. Let's reload while aiming. For the reload, reload animation, I'm still using my reload animation. And from outside. What if you want to replace the reload animation with another reload animation? The thing here is that I'm using my reload animation as additive, so you need to set your animation to additive too. It's very simple. 
Let's go to the animation starter pack and find the reload animations that we have here. So reload rifle, reload rifle. We have two reload animations for the rifle, one for the hip and one for iron sights. I have already tested both and this one, the hip fire one, looks better in our system. So let's open this and let's set this to additive. So we go here in the asset details panel, there is the additive settings section and we change from no additive to local space because it's the same setting I'm using my original animation. Let's take a look at the settings of my reload animation. So animations, reload, additive settings, local space, base post type selected, animation scale, and the base animation that selected is the idle, is my idle animation. So let's do the same for the animation starter pack reload. Oh, here. So local, local space, selected animation scale, and let's select here my idol as the page animation. Save it. And we need to go to the animation blueprint and in the event graph, you go to the reload section and and here in the play slot animation as dynamic montage node we change the animation sequence to the one that we just set so it's reload right rifle hit compile and save and let's test so reload it actually looks better than i expected Let's see the reload while aiming. It looks better than I expected. And let's see from outside. There's a thing going on with the legs. It doesn't happen when he's walking. At least. No, it happens, but. It happens, but. It's not as noticeable because his legs are moving anyway. But when he's standing still, it's very noticeable. So, what we can do is we use, instead of using my, my, my idle animation as the base we are going to use the animation starter pack on idle animation for, for the pose idle rifle idle rifle iron sight so let's see So there's a problem with the elbow position of his left arm when he reloads. We can fix that. In the two-bone IK for the left hand, we have a position for the left elbow. It's called joint target location. So with the node selected, here in the viewport we can see this is the target location for the elbow or the joint target location so if we move this you can see that his elbow is moving so it seems that we need to place it a bit far back so 
so he doesn't try to to keep his elbow forward when he's trying to reach for the magazine at his waist so let's see much better now while aiming If you want to replace the fire animation, the process would be similar because the fire animation is used as additive in my project. So you would you would do the same, but instead of replacing it here in the reload section, you would go to the fire section and it has the same node that specifies the fire animation. So you would replace this for your new fire animation after you you set your fire animation to additive just like we did for the reload animation but you would need to do one extra step for the fire animation because when you're aiming the fire animation uses curves that I placed in my fire animation to make the animation visible while you're aiming if we go to my fire animation we can see the three curves here those curves don't exist in the other animations so if you have your own fire animation you would need to copy and paste the, those three, cur three curves to your fire animation because they are used in the animation graph but the thing with the animation starter pack is that the fire animations they look good from outside from third person and external view but they, they weren't made for first person view so I already tested them they don't look good in first person so I'm not going to replace the, anim the fire animation for these and you, you might not need also in a project to replace this fire animation because it, it probably will work with different guns and different characters and the last thing we need to do is to implement the wall sway because the wall sway is made by curves that are placed in my original walk animations and we replace the walk animations with the animation starter pack walk animation so now we need to copy over the curves from my animation to the new walk animations so let's open my original walk animations and take a look at the curves so here are the, the two curves that we need to copy from my walk animations into the, the animation starter pack walk animations I'm going to just select those two right click copy and let's start with the forward animation I'm going to click here and control V and it pasted the two curves so let's start with the horizontal because it's easier you can see that it's shorter than the the length of the new animation the new animation is 55 frames long and my walk animation was 40 frames long so we need to scale it so the last frame last keyframe of the animation goes to the last frame of the animation otherwise it will look jumpy so I can just select all keyframes then go to the scale mode and I'm going to I need to place the the pivot at the start because I don't want the first keyframe to move and then I'm going to scale it here till the 
last frame, last keyframe is on the last frame of the animation. All right, so let's do the same for the vertical animation. And I have snapping turned on. It's useful for this, for these scale operations, because it ensures that the last frame will snap to the last keyframe will snap to the last frame of the animation. So this one, is, this one doesn't start at the first frame. So I'm going to make it easier for me to scale it by placing the first frame at the first the first keyframe at the first frame first so i'm going to drag it with the middle mouse button while i'm holding shift so i don't accidentally drag it up and down i just want to drag it to the side so i hold shift middle mouse press middle mouse button press and then i drag it to the side until the first keyframe is on the first frame and now it's easier for me to scale because I just need to place the last keyframe on the last frame. First, I need to place the pivot at the first key, so the first key doesn't move when I scale. And then, uh, I, this is actually the last keyframe that I want, because this is a repetition of those. So I'm going to place this at the last frame. Okay, now it's scaled co correctly. Now I just need to move the entire curve back to where it was before. So the first, go. let me go back out of the scale mode. And again, holding shift and middle mouse button, I'm going to drag it back to where it was. It was here, if I'm not mistaken, Mine time minus 0.2. Yeah, it was here. So now, we check that the the value is the same on the first frame of the animation minus point zero six six two and here in the last frame it's also minus zero point six two so this is important so the animation doesn't jump when we are looping so control s to save and let's test this Yeah, it's working well. Now we just need to copy those two adjusted animation, adjusted curves to the other walk animations. Walk, walk backwards, walk right, walk right, and walk left. So copy, and let's go to the walk backward and control V let's take a look looks correct both curves look alright control S to save go to the walk left click here control V let's check this check this looks alright walk right click here control V Let's check this and check this and it looks alright. Let's save those two. And test them. And the cool thing about having those curves in the animation is that if I increase the speed of the animation, it automatically the, the speed of the sway will also be increased. 